you don't need a tripod for night photography. You know, it's like most of the people who make these videos, they're not primarily night photographers. They just uh, kind of make a video about everything. But I am a night photographer. That's primarily what I do. And there's probably like one or two videos where I actually use a tripod. And that's because I was actually waiting in the same spot for like three hours to get the shot that I wanted. Link down below. But anyways, today I want to talk about shadows and highlights and exposure. One thing that most people starting night photography just get completely wrong. This video is kind of a rant, but I also hope to be educational and inform people <laughs> regarding night photography. You see is, I don't understand why so many photographers have this obsession with the shadows. Like uh, they need, they want to be able to see everything in the shadows like they feel like if their blacks are black they failed somehow and this is just completely wrong uh when it comes to photography like uh well at least I, well i don't want to say it's wrong but when it comes to night photography shadows are your friend people always ask me like where can i go f shoot the most lights in seoul like uh i want to take pictures like you and if you take a close look at my pictures most of my pictures are actually really dark. Like I don't like super lit up places where there's a lot of light. Actually, I avoid places with a lot of light. I like really dark alleys with one or two light sources. You know, I actually have a video about my night photography settings. And in that video, I actually talked about how I like to underexpose my pictures. This is one of my cameras. This is the Fuji X-Pro2. I didn't get it because of its dynamic range, of its megapixels, or whatever other stuff people are interested in. I just got it because I like it. I just like the way it feels. But anyways, I almost always keep this camera negative one EV. Like the exposure compensation dial, which most people don't even know what it does, is actually quite great. You see, the way this works is your camera decides how much light is going to let into your picture through metering. But sometimes the camera is wrong. Uh, it's not mirroring the way you want it to. It's only mirroring the way the camera thinks you want it to. So you use the exposure compensation dial to tell the camera, okay, you think it should be exposed like this, but I want you to make it brighter, plus one EV, or I want you to make it darker, minus one EV. So I almost always underexpose my pictures at night. You might be wondering, why why would you underexpose your pictures at night like that that makes no sense you know no you need to use a 1.2 lens and the latest uh, sony camera because there's like no noise or blah 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 you know actually it's funny because I, I got a comment from on one of my other videos saying like you're doing it all wrong you shouldn't be using a four you shouldn't be using an f4 lens you should be using a 50 millimeter 1.2 blah 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 lens stuff like that you know it's it's always other photographers trying to tell you what to do and how to do your own business, you know. But as you can tell, I'm a little bit mad because I'm very sensitive about this subject. But the thing is, if you are doing night photography, you need to learn to expose for the highlights. Now, if you take a picture, for example, I have here a picture of uh, one of my students you would say it's exposed. I mean, you take a picture, you can see it clearly, everything is great. And you got the lights in the back, yes. But the highlights are all blown out. I can't recover information that's in the highlight that's already been blown out. Every well-seasoned photographer will tell you this. You try to uh, take a picture of the lights blown out, you can't get that information back. However, if you take a darker picture underexposed uh, you save the information in the highlights and actually you can bring back the shadows much more easily than you can bring out any information in the highlights like if I take a picture where all the lights are like super bright and I try to see what's in the lights you won't be able to see you won't be able to bring back that information however if you take a picture and you take it darker on purpose uh, you can bring up the shadows more and you can actually uh, see the highlights much better. You can see the colors in the highlights, you know. So this is why this is why you don't need the latest and greatest camera to be shooting at night. 
you don't need a 1.2 lens to be shooting photography at night. You don't need to do what other photographers are telling you to do. This is why I use, this is why I can shoot with my phone just fine. Uh, and this is why I use mainly an F4 lens on my camera. Uh, because, just because, because I can, you know. I don't like people telling me not to do something because they don't do it that way. I do things because that's what works for me and that's how I see it fits. Yeah, so basically, when you shoot night pictures, you don't need to see everything that's in the shadows. Like, what is this obsession people have with trying to see everything that's dark in photography? You know, it doesn't make you a better photographer. In my opinion, pictures where the blacks are black and the shadows are remain shadows are actually much nicer than if everything is just, you can see everything, you know. Some of you may be wondering, how do I do this with my iPhone or whatever smartphone? You can do this with any phone. I have a phone tutorial already. It's like one of my first videos. You just have to touch the highlights and your phone will expose for the highlights, you know. And that's basically all I do when I take my street pictures is uh, I expose for the highlights, you know. It's okay if my photo is really dark, you know, because I want the information in the highlights to remain. And that's why I don't need a tripod because if you're underexposing, you don't need a super slow shutter speed, you know. I mean, sometimes it's great to use it, but it's more for artistic effect for me, you know. And this is why you don't need to get the latest camera to be shooting at night. And most cameras these days can go up to 450,000 ISO. Like, when am I ever really going to need that? I mean, that's one of those things you need if you really, really need the shot. I don't even think astrophotographers go that high you know it's just it's unnecessary but it's there if you need it but for myself i almost never go over iso 3200 you know and my camera is from like 2011 2012 the fuji x pro 2 which is one of my favorites it's uh, i don't know when it came out but when i got it i didn't really care about the specs or anything for like that cause i'm because i already know that it doesn't really matter, you know, and that's why you don't need the latest and greatest camera. That's why I can shoot the pictures I take with my phone because because it doesn't matter, you know, just to underexpose your pictures and bring back the shadows when you're in Lightroom. Um, but you don't have to bring them all, right? You don't you don't want to make your, you don't want to make your picture to lose all that contrast. So this is just a, my kind of tip for you for night photography and what most night photographers get wrong. And uh, yeah, I hope you think about that next time you're out shooting night pictures because uh, it's it's one thing that changed my night photography was like to learn to underexpose. You know, before I was trying to just uh, catch everything in the shadows and I had that slow shutter speed and I, oh my God, I need a tripod, you know, a total noob. But no, you don't. You don't need a 51.2. You don't need a tripod. You don't need the latest A7 with whatever hundreds ISO, right? So, yeah. Regarding how I keep the camera steady is an old ancient trick where you just hold still when you take the picture, you know, like you should give it a try. I'm not trying to demean anyone, but I get so many comments about that too. It's like, how do you get the picture so crisp and how do you stay still? It's like, you just, you just hold the camera still, you know, it's, it's an old ancient art. Anyways, if you didn't mind my rants, uh, please go ahead and like and subscribe or comment and I'll see you around.